you know, I basically told the OC Weekly that like we were going to be produced uh, and recorded by Ike Owens. Mm. And they were like, bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, mm. no, you're not. You know, like this guy's a legend. Sorry for cussing. <laughs> but, you know, like th- that was like the response I got. And then wow. after they were like, you know, uh, we're going to have to do a, a background check on that because that's not you know, we, we interview bands all the time and nobody has that as like their resume. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I get it, you know? Um, and then I, he called me and he was like, I got a call from the OC weekly. And they said that you had mentioned in an interview that you were, that I was going to be producing you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I I did. I was pretty wasted. I know we haven't done anything official yet. Or And he's like, well, you know what? (laughs) And I was like, and I was like, uh, yeah. And he's like, it's official. <laughs> and I wow. Was like, awesome. awesome. Yeah. And um, then I saw an article in Rolling Stones that was talking about that a lot of musicians were moving to Nashville hmm. and, and mm-hmm. Nashville was like the new next like place for musicians, even though it's always been the place for musicians. It was yeah. like this like new resurgence. And in the article, it said that Ike Owens was going to move to Nashville. Mm. And so I was like, you know, I mean, I all, all I can say is like selfishly, I was like, my window is just narrowed <laughs> because this guy said he wants to do something with me, but like uh, he's moving to Nashville. So then I called him and I was like, hey, dude, like, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, I still want to do something and and I'll be straight up with you. Like, I read you were moving to Nashville. And he was like, first off, he was like, yeah, of course, I'm ready. Like, let's book studio time. Let's go to the compound, um, you know, uh, which the um, Mars Volta actually recorded some stuff at the compound, too, as did like Chicano Batman and a lot of other famous, uh, wonderful musicians. Um, was that by, the studio? I'm sorry. Was that the studio in Long Beach or? It is. And okay. Antoine is the, just the, I don't know, guru is the right uh, thing uh, to okay. label him, but he's just yeah. this incredible guy who's done everything, including worked at Capitol. Um, and so that being said, um, after it was all done and we had everything ready, I was just like, you know what? I have to be honest with you. The reason why I hit you up right now is because I heard you were moving to Nashville. And he's like, dude, I'm already there. He's like, I've been living there for like the last month. He's like, that interview was last month. <laughs> and uh, he still like came down. He flew down. Um, wow. I would pick him up from the airport. We would do pre-production stuff as far as like getting the songs in, t- in order. So, you know, obviously as much as I, you know, as much as we had our songs uh, written the way they were written, he's the kind of guy that you just listen to, you know, like he yeah. says, well, you might want to tweak this year or like shorten this or do whatever you're going to do, like, and individually to like all the musicians in the band kind of give his critiques. Yeah. So that when we get into the studio, we knew what we were doing. Yeah. Um. So I meet Antoine and it's like, you know, nine in the morning or 10 at, at the compound. And he's like, so you're going to be working with Ike. And I was like, yeah, he's like, that's a pretty big thing. And I was like, oh, I know I'm honored. He's like, I watched, uh, he's like, I watched something of yours on YouTube last night. He's like, I have to say, I am not impressed. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, I totally understand. He's like, but you know what? If Ike has faith in you, then I'm, you know, I'm going to listen. Wow. (laughs) And I always remind Anton about that because now we have a much different relationship and, um, you know, he's, he's an incredible human being too. Um, but so that being said, we went into the studio, we recorded the album. There's a a lot that went to do with it. The fact that like some highlights, um, you know, and this was, I had been in the studio a lot at this point because I had been in the studio with a lot of punk bands and you know, the, Mm. the, the punk band recording ethic is much different. Um, Mm. then like, a guy that plays the Jack White and the Mars Volta. <laughs> yeah. So with him, with him, it was all like uh, he knew, you know, exactly between him and Antoine, they knew what amps we were going to use. Like we didn't use any of our own amps. Everything mm. was like, okay, you're using like a a 1960s uh, Supra from Japan uh, for the treble, and then on the bottom is going to be a bassman from like the 
70s uh, wow. Fender, and between the two, you're going to run it through this effect, and that's going to be your guitar tone. And then wow. the other guitarist, he was like, he's like, you use a Vox, right? Um, and I and I don't know the the brand of Vox, but it's a very popular one, like a professional one. I mean, they were like, this is like how insanely in sync they were and like just how much experience they had. Mm -hmm. He was like, okay, well, that Vox that you have, we have the one from like 1962 or something. And don't quote me on the year, but he's like, and this one was before they changed the, like, you know, the, the sound range that are like, now they make them where they cut out like certain decibels but you're going to use the original one that has the full spectrum of decibels. Hmm. And so, you know, we used their drum set um, tuned by Antoine, already ready to go. Hmm. Um, oh, and it was, uh, oh my God, uh, Josh Freeze's drum set. Uh, Vandals, um, hmm. you know, I mean, a million other things. But like, <laughs> so it was just like, whoa, now we're playing on this dude's drum set too. Wow. And... And we went in there and Ike was like, uh, just orchestra conductor, like, this is what you do. This is how you do it. This is the tempo that's going to be done. And you do it until you do it right. And we had yeah. songs that we did in two takes and songs that we took, did in 18 takes. Um, you know what I mean? And um, So I'm, I'm curious, when, when you do 18 takes, do you punch in in the middle or you start from the top? Start from the top and 18 takes is like the end of the day and then the beginning <laughs> of the next day. Because the end of the day, you're like on take number like 15 and you're like, okay, all 15 takes are <laughs> crap. And yeah. then you, you're you obviously done for the day and we need to come back the next day and then capture it. And in fact, I, I will, a little bit of insight onto that. Like it was basically a song that, and another a credit to Antoine was that like, it was a song that we had probably played for a year, hmm. but the drummer, uh, John Erickson, he just couldn't get it right because it's a long song. And yeah, they want to do it in one take unless there's like a break where you can like easily splice it. But you right. know what I mean? Like you want that energy, right? Yeah. So, so after we finished an unsuccessful take of that song, the Antoine basically started showing John different variations of how he could play that song so mm. that he could achieve it and it would sound good. So it's like on the spot, like this guy is teaching us a different way of playing. He's like, and you're going to play it like this tomorrow. And this is the way mm. it's going to go. And and then we did it because we're, uh, you know, I know musicians are known for having egos, but in a situation like ours, there was no ego. It was like, these people are gods to us and we're going to listen to everything they say. There's no yeah. good suggestion that we could possibly give because they've seen it all, done it all, and they know what works. And yeah. that's a time for us to learn, really. Well, and I feel like great. I've learned a lot in being friends with uh, you know, Antoine in that type of studio setting um, just by sitting and listening you know, um, and uh, so when we finished everything, it was then we met up um, then to just do some mix downs and stuff. And then unfortunately, he was going to come back and meet with us another weekend and he passed away in uh, Mexico on mm. tour with Jack White. Um, and that yeah. was obviously horrible. Um yeah for a million reasons, um, mostly because he, the way I saw him at that point was like, he was like the, a, a new mentor to me um, and obviously a friend. Um, and then that album, seriously, us as a band, we just got shelved for a year. Like, um, and because it was just out of respect, you know, like I'm not yeah. gonna go and do anything with it. And then, um, when we finally got back together, we finished the album. But as a band, we pretty much never really went forward with it and never really got it released. So it's on YouTube. But like, if you go to Ike's discography of his producer credits, um, we're on the last uh, line and it says unreleased. Um, even though we released it on YouTube, it was never really released. Um, yeah. We didn't... Uh, tour it we didn't promote it it was just one of those albums that which kind of goes back to in my mind the experience that i had with him 
um, everything that we did, everything that we learned, the final result, um, that, that's, that's more than enough, you know, it's more than I could have ever asked for. 